Before I begin my homily today, can I just tell you a little story? Is that right? Can you guys bear with me for a little bit? So this last week, last Sunday, uh, right after Masses, uh, I got in with my, uh, one of my best friends in the world, Father Mike Eckley, and we did a trip that we took together a lot because we were in graduate school together up in the Twin Cities. So he picked me up, we drove up to uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. We stayed overnight at the seminary uh, where we both went to school. We went to a Twins game on the next night and then we drove home the next day. So a real quick, quick trip to the Twin Cities. But we stayed in the building where we had both been 30 plus years ago. And we ended up, we had uh, um, a beverage, uh, uh, whatever, that doesn't matter, but it was uh, with, <laughs> it was with one of the current, current uh, faculty members, okay? And he, uh, he was from Bismarck, North Dakota. And Mike and I were trying to think about the, the, the seminary that we went to school with from Bismarck. And, and he reminded us, it's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's him, it's him. And, and this priest, who was much younger, um, he says, yeah, he still has PTSD from his time of greeting the pillars. Okay? Well, here's the story behind that. We, uh, we had a very uh, creative liturgy team, okay, teaching us in the seminary. And I'm sure you can tell, right? I mean, you know, um, I can do some creative things once in a while. The, one of the, the, the women on, on the faculty was trained in drama, okay? So she had these young men getting ready for ordination, walking into the church and individually all of them going, hello, pillar. Hello, pew. So yeah, he had PTSD. So, um, but what really brought me back to all of that reminiscing that we were doing together was when I watched Corey proclaim the word. How do you, how do you think he did? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you think he did well? Right? So did you notice he takes the word of God into his arms? He, he addresses the microphone beautifully. He has eye contact with all of you, right? Right? But you know what he did not do? He did not open the gate. That's right. My professor would have gotten after him for not opening the gate. Let me explain. So we were in class. She's teaching us how to proclaim the word. And the first person who got up to, to read in class, do his experiment, he just, it's his time. So he gets up and walks over, gets to the podium and starts proclaiming. She's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Stan, you didn't open the gate. Exactly, right? Everybody knows. Everybody knows you have to open the gate, right? Okay, so that's the that's the classes that I had, right? So, of course, then when it got to my turn, I'm listening to all of these things. She stopped everybody, everybody in front of me and was correcting them and telling them interesting, I'll just put it, interesting things. God, may she rest in peace. She's gone from us now. But, but so I stood up. I opened the gate so beautifully, okay? It became my time, and I went, And then I got to the podium and I took the Word of God in my arms so beautifully. And I started to do everything, right, that she had told everybody in front of me. And 
she stopped me. And you know what she had for me? You're trying to do everything correctly. <laughs> and, I, and I had to say, you got me there. Okay, so, start trying for, thanks for going down memory lane with me there just for a second, okay? Do you realize that uh, this is the fourth of five weekends in a row that we are hearing from John's Gospel, what's called the Bread of Life Discourse? So, let's just recap, okay? The last three Sundays, and today again, did you catch it? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Okay, all right, I just wanted to make sure you guys picked up on that, okay, because we've been saying it for four weeks in a row now, okay? So, because I'm the preacher and I have all this liberty, I think we're good with the bread of life discourse, okay? So let's go to the second reading, can we? All right, because I am all preached out on the bread of life. I'm just gonna admit that. So we heard in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters, watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity. I want to focus on that because yesterday here at Sacred Heart we had a very beautiful celebration for our beloved Michael Fitzsimmons, right, who sat in that seat over there for over 30 years being the backbone of our, of our music, of our worship, really, the backbone for us. We celebrated that 10 o'clock was the service yesterday morning. I was supposed to be at an archdiocesan uh, conference, a day of reflection on Laudato Si. That started at 10 o'clock. Um, so right afterward, instead of going over and, and sharing a meal, I went to that day of reflection. And I, I just want to share with all of you that I really, I really I am hopeful for what we're going to try to accomplish in the Archdiocese when it comes to helping people embrace the Pope's encyclical, La Dato Si. Remember that one? It's a few years old now, but it's uh, care for our common home, right? And I must say, we do a beautiful job here. We're all, all the other people that we had in that room, we tried to get representatives from around the Archdiocese representing different uh, um, uh, uh, people like engineers who can help us with, with uh, different projects and, and donors. And we had youth, we had youth representative, represented from St. Benedict the Moor. God bless them. Yes, we had refugee representative. Uh, we had uh, a farmer represented. I twisted my, my brother's arm and got him to go. So we had them represented, we have to do a much better job of, of getting uh, farmers and ranchers to the table on this. Um, but my prayer that I came away with yesterday was actually part of preparing this day. My prayer in preparation for the day also was that I just prayed that all of the people that came together yesterday could at least come to a, a common understanding that climate change is not a political issue. But rather, climate change is an ethical issue. It's of our ethics, and as Catholics, we are called to ethics, right? To know the difference between right and wrong, okay? overusing Mother Earth's resources for her own personal use is wrong. 
not striving to take care of Mother Earth so that the generations behind, that come after us will have a common home is wrong, right? Doing what we can now to try to curve the, the tra trajectory that we are on to save Mother Earth is right and good and just. So that was my goal. That was my prayer for yesterday. And then what we're trying to do is take that and get ready for uh, providing a, a, a action plan for the archdiocese. Because I, I, I really think it comes down to how we are called to live, not as foolish persons, but as wise. Right? See how I just tied in the readings there? Okay, so there you go. Um, now, now it's a homily, okay? All right, before it was just a sermon, but I just tied it in. Okay, so, but also, also, making the most of the opportunities before us. Now is a beautiful time, a beautiful time to try to do what we can to, to, reverse the trend that we're on because there there are so many rebates available to us i don't know if i've shared this with all of you but we as a sacred heart parish we made a loan earlier this year to the q school system so that the q school system can put a solar array that fills up the top of sacred heart school so that we can take use, make use of solar energy that will reduce uh, our dependence on fossil fuels. Okay, we already did that right over in our our office building because of the generosity of all of you. We did we made that leap. We did that project before there was a rebate. Okay, now we're going to get 50% back on that investment because of the Infrastructure Act, okay? We were able to, uh, to do this much bigger project over here for our school with simply getting a, a loan from somewhere and we, we, got, we ended up as a parish. By the way, thank you for that. I didn't do it on my own, all right? Just trust me. Our finance committee uh, went through this and, and we said, yes, this is, this is a no-brainer because we had $134,000 sitting in the deposit loan fund of the archdiocese that we were getting 3.5% return on that investment, okay? We made the school system a loan for 5% on our money. Well, we just made money, right? Okay, for the next 12 years, we'll be making 5% on that money instead of 3.5, okay? But it also allows for our school system to have less expense in, in, the, uh, in the electrical, right, uh, that, that, that line item. It also allows us to help use less fossil fuels. I think that's a win, 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 right? Oh, and then, then we're teaching our kids about the importance of taking care of the planet, win, all right? And then we're setting example for the rest of the archdiocese, okay, in this project. That's a win, 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 win kind of a deal, I think, right? But also, I'm asking all of us to really to look into our own hearts and see how we are called in this one area, right, of striving to care for our common home, to not be foolish, right, to be wise, and to take advantage of the opportunities that are in front of us. There is so many opportunities 
that makes these kind of projects no-brainers, right? When I first asked the, the Q's uh, fund if we could do something like that, they said it just doesn't make sense. It takes over 25 years to, to uh, make up for the money, right, that we would be putting into it. And then you're, you'd have to start replacing panels and you never would get ahead. But I say, we're getting ahead by saving Mother Earth. But anyway, they, they, we didn't make the leap then, but we did now because of these opportunities that are in front of us. We'll get 50% back on what we invest in this project. And we can all do that right now, okay? So let us strive to, to be wise, to not be foolish, to recognize that, that the one that will come to us at this altar today, the bread of life, he desires for that life for all of us and all of those to come after us. As our Native American brothers and sisters point out to us that we should be thinking and praying about those seven generations ahead of us. Seven generations ahead is what we should be acting on. From what the statistics are saying, if we don't reverse the trend right now, the sea level seven generations from now will have displaced, uh, it's, it's a staggering number. I don't have those numbers in my head right now but it's a staggering number of people that will be displaced from their living place right now because of the rising uh, sea levels. So we have to do what we can now to make sure that the bread of life will be available to those seven generations in front of us.